I mentioned before that the hallmarks of enzyme-catalyzed reactions are speed and selectivity. The last few webcasts have been talking about speed, and so in this webcast, we're going to look at some examples of really remarkable selectivity. Selectivity is sometimes referred to as substrate specificity, and I don't think there's any better example than the first one that we're going to look at here. We're using a lipase enzyme to catalyze the hydrolysis of ester groups, and the ester groups of being hydrolyzed are these acetate groups, abbreviated AC. So there's an OAC group there and an OAC group there. And these two substrates look remarkably similar to one another, and I think at first glance you would guess that if one of them is going to react, certainly the other one would as well. Well, we can see that these two substrates are related as an enantiomeric pair, and if they're present as a one-to-one -one mixture, and that's a racemic mixture subjected to this ester hydrolyzing enzyme, this lipase, only one of those enantiomers undergoes reaction. The one on the left is reactive, the one on the right, that acetate group remains unchanged. It's unreactive. That's a remarkable example of substrate specificity. That's an example of enantiomers. What about diastereomers, a different kind of stereoisomer? So if we took this acetate group and the substrate on the left, the one that did react, and we invert the configuration to make the diastereomer, and now subject that to the lipase enzyme, no reaction takes place. So the second example is an illustration of diastereoselectivity in the substrate specificity. How can this be? How can it be that an enzyme is able to distinguish between an enantiomeric pair or between diastereomers? And if we just remember that the enzyme active site is chiral, it has the ability through the chiral shape of that pocket to recognize substrates in different ways and position those reactive ester groups closer to or further from the enzyme active site side chains. And that's really the mode by which the selectivity comes about. We're going to look at some actual structures of enzyme active sites to try to determine how it is that the positioning of the functional groups can lead to specificity. The next example takes achiral substrates, a pair of reactive groups in an achiral substrate, and shows that only one of them undergoes reaction. So we see this molecule as being achiral. There's the mirror plane, the molecule below. We see that as being achiral. There's the mirror plane and the molecule. The left half and the right half are related through that mirror plane. Here the top and the bottom are related through the mirror plane. In both cases, we have enantiotopic ester groups. In the top case, we have enantiotopic methyl groups. You could do the Q-test, for example, and verify that, or any other way that you would approach the problem, you'd see that those methyl esters are an antiotopic. When we subject this molecule to pig liver esterase, it's an ester hydrolyzing enzyme also, only the ester group on the top undergoes reaction. We take this achiral molecule and we've converted it into a single stereoisomer of a chiral molecule, hydrolyzing the methyl group off of the top. How can it be that an enzyme is able to distinguish in antiotopic groups? Remember back when we talked about in antiotopic groups, they can be distinguished by a chiral probe, and I just mentioned that the enzyme active site is chiral, and it's capable, therefore, of distinguishing the different in antiotopic groups. One undergoes reaction, one doesn't. A remarkable substrate specificity for these in antiotopic groups. In the bottom case, we see that we could subject this molecule with an antiotopic acetate groups to two different enzymes, and in one case, one of the acetate groups hydrolyzes, and in the second case, the other acetate group hydrolyzes. Both of them have a single acetate group remaining, and so it's a difference in, again, the location of how that substrate is bound in the enzyme active site relative to where those active site side chains are positioned.